Just do something to tell you who I am, you know? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Seek and R. And today we're going to be reviewing Batman The Long Halloween Part 1, full spoilers coming up. So if you haven't seen this movie, please go watch it. It is available right now digitally and in physical copy. And I will be giving away a digital copy of this movie very soon, here in a second. I just want to give a little intro here before we get into the review and just say that I've already gone through a lot of this stuff in my recent comic book discussion of issues one through four. So I'll try not to repeat myself too much because obviously this is based on the comic and this movie coincidentally is pretty much based off of the first four issues of Batman The Long Halloween with some teases and stuff from other issues kind of thrown in. So we're going to get into spoilers. We're going to talk about those. But, but you know, again, I don't want to repeat myself too much. So if you want a more in-depth discussion of the story overall, definitely check out my comic book review of this. And if you just want to know how the animated film kind of, you know, delivers this story, that's what we're going to get into today. And if you want a free copy, a free digital copy, I'm going to put that code up on screen right now. Here you go. First person to go to that website and put this code in. And this code is courtesy of Warner Brothers Home Entertainment, basically because they actually surprisingly sent me a copy of this movie to review. And I was not expecting that. I mean, they've been sending me images for months, you know, to help promote the movie. And we've been sharing some of those on my, you know, commentary, my fan commentary tracks with Alex. And we're going to be coming back to those in July. So make sure you stay subscribed to this channel. If you like DC animated movies, me and Alex like to do fan commentary tracks. Uh, you know, over those movies and uh, we watch them on HBO Max and kind of hang out together on Thursday nights and talk over them. So uh, definitely, you know, tune in for those. They'll be coming back in July. So whoever goes to that website first and puts the code in, you get a free copy of this movie. Enjoy it. Let us know down in the comments what you thought of this movie. Put your review down there. Uh, whether you get the free digital one, you know, let us know in the comments if you got it. And if you just saw this movie and you liked it and you want to put your review down below, please do that as well. And before we get started in the spoiler review, I do want to say a big thank you to Warner Brothers Home Entertainment for actually sending me a physical copy of this movie that was so cool of them to do. That's how I have the digital code to give it out to you guys. So a big thank you to Warner Brothers Home Entertainment. I was not expecting a physical copy of this movie, and that was really great of them to send it over. So I want to be fully transparent and let you know that they did send me this movie, but I also want to be completely honest and say it had nothing to do with my review of it. As you guys know, for months we've been covering news on this. We've been sharing images and stuff and uh, and I've been so excited for this movie it's based on one of my favorite Batman comics so I already was going in with a strong bias so keep that in mind when you hear my review but as always I will be constructive and I will point out differences between the comics and the animated version some things I do like some things I don't like but overall we're gonna have a fun time so I hope you enjoy this episode and again thank you Warner Brothers and thank you all for supporting the show and for getting us to the level of subscribers we got and the support we're getting it means a lot and I have a lot more Warner Brothers and DC stuff Stuff, especially animated coming out for you guys very soon. I'll be covering more Trisse episodes that are on Netflix. I'll be covering the Mortal Kombat Battle for the Realms animated movie and we'll go back and talk more about the Scorpion's Revenge movie and do a proper review of that before the new one comes out. And then also we'll cover Injustice, Batman Long Halloween Part 2, everything else Warner Brothers animated. We're going to be covering it and bringing it to you guys. So thank you very much. Without further ado, let's dive into spoilers. What I like about this movie is how it starts off. It opens up with Bruce talking to Carmine Falcone in a room, you know, in Carmine's office. And then you have Alberto in the background, a couple of mobsters around. And basically, Carmine Falcone is making Bruce a deal. He's basically saying, look, me and your father, Thomas Wayne, we built a hospital for children together. And we can do a lot of good, Bruce, if you just team up with me and we combine our, our efforts. You know, Wayne Enterprises and the Falcone name and our imports and all the things we work on, basically all the crime he does. He's like, look, if we team up, we can really change Gotham. And Bruce says, uh, no. I believe in Gotham City. So, of course, Bruce, by saying that, has turned down Carmine Falcone's offer. And that's a thing that's going to pop up throughout the story. So from there, we get into the opening credits, which is really great. I want to mention the music here because it's more of a lack of music. There's sounds that play and sometimes single instruments very subtly. But it is almost like the absence of noise while this opening credit sequence is happening. And during the opening credits, they show some of Tim Sale's amazing artwork, uh, kind of animated, which is really cool. Uh, they show like this chalk line that goes around a dead body. It's kind of forming, but it forms a bat symbol, which is really neat. You get to see Maroney's men being shot up at their restaurant, uh, a judge getting paid off to look the other way. 
Harvey Dent being elected, uh, Batman stopping a bunch of gangsters, you know, who are, you know, stealing and they're in their car, uh, that they're being chased down by the police. You have Johnny Vitti meeting with Harvey Dent under the 1939 bridge, which is a cool nod to when Batman was first created. Um, and then you have the death of Johnny Vitti in his tub on Halloween, which is obviously from the ending of the first comic book, but here it's the ending of the opening credits. And I like that they just get right into it. The murders start happening, but you see in the opening credits that Johnny Vitti was meeting with Harvey Dent. And then later on, we find out that the reason they met is because Vitti was going to turn over evidence that will convict Carmine Falcone. So now everyone thinks it's not the beginning of a serial killing of mobsters, but that this is just Carmine Falcone silencing someone who was going to turn on him, one of his own nephews. I love the lack of music. It just, it's really off-putting. Like it really makes my stomach turn uh, for, for sure. Like when I'm listening to this movie, I was listening for more music and it's there, but it's so soft and it's like, it's, it grows throughout the movie too, which I think is like kind of mirrors Batman trying to grow. But then as Batman near the end of this, obviously spoilers, we're in that spoiler territory. Batman kind of fails at the end of this. So the music goes back down. And I just thought that was really good. I just thought the, the, the music kind of became or lack of music kind of became a character in the story, which I really like. Uh, but the voice acting, I just want to mention Jensen Eccles as Bruce Wayne and Batman is so good. I'm such a big Supernatural fan. I got the Supernatural tattoos all over my arm. As you guys know, I've watched every episode. I own every season and I'm just, uh, except for season 15, I got to go buy that. I just don't have any money right now, but it's, uh, but I love that show. It, it's my favorite show that was on TV. And, uh, and so Jensen playing Batman, I loved him as Red Hood many years ago. And it's so cool to see him as Batman now or hear him as Batman. Um, and then we have Josh Duhamel, who I'm a big Transformers fan, obviously, and he plays Harvey Dent in this, and he does some great things we're going to talk about with his voice with Harvey Dent, which I love, and Tim Sheridan's script helps that, which I love even more, so we're going to get into that soon. Um, Naya Rivera, rest in peace, the very talented young lady. Uh, she is playing Selena Kyle, and this is one of her last performances before her tragic passing last year, which was just heartbreaking to hear about, and uh, and hearing her voice in this, it just you tear up, and like I really got emotional because I remember me and my mom were following that story and it was very heartbreaking, like her passing and uh, hearing her as Catwoman here and Selena Kyle, she is so good. That girl was so talented. Troy Baker playing Joker. Um, you have Billy Burke, who is Commissioner Gordon. Well, he's not Commissioner yet. He's Captain Gordon. Uh, but Billy Burke does a great job. Um, we have Greg Chun as Mickey Chen. Uh, David Desmulchin who is in the upcoming Suicide Squad movie as Polka Dot Man. He plays Calendar Man. He's so awesome in this, the scene he has. He's very much like a Hannibal Lecter, but he kind of has a speech pattern of Billy Crudup, which is really good. I really dug that. Um, Alistair Duncan returning as Alfred Pennyworth. He played Alfred in the uh, the 2000, like four, 2005, the Batman cartoon, which is my, I love that cartoon so much. And I'll have those uh, videos that I was putting up on my Patreon like a year back. I'll have those going up on this channel probably later this summer where I got to interview Sam Liu and Brendan Vietti and we did a retrospective and looked back at the creation of that show and, and their work in that show. Um, but I love Alistair Duncan. He's so great. And hearing him as Alfred again was awesome. Um, and then we also have Amy Landecker who plays uh, Barbara Gordon. Uh, Julie Nathanson, who does a great job as Gilda Dent. I loved her as Gilda in this. Um, and I can't wait to see what they do with Gilda in the next story. Uh, Jim Peary as Sal Maroney. Uh, Jack Quaid as Alberto Falcone, Fred Catascior as Solomon Grundy, uh, who I, I'm a big Solomon Grundy fan, obviously, and Titus Welliver as Carmine Falcone. Just an amazing cast. Uh, Jim Krieg, who produced this, Booch Lukit, who was a supervising producer, uh, Sam Register, Kimberly Moreau, Michael Uslin, everyone who works on this, just top notch. I mean, honestly, this is one of the better DC animated movies I've seen, and I love so many of them. But this one instantly shot up to near the top for me. That's so good. And I've watched it four times already uh, so I could record this just so I made sure that I caught as many things as I could catch. But obviously I might forget some things or miss some things. So let me know down below if that's true. Um, all right. So then we have scenes with the Captain Gordon at the beginning with his kids. Such a great scene. A lot of emotion there. You know, Babs wants to just be like her dad. She's dressed as a cop. Her brother, James Jr., is dressed as a ghost. Uh, very reminiscent of, or as a very foreshadowing of who they'll grow up to be like, which is, you know, really awesome. Um, and then Babs gets disappointed when her dad has to go to work because he has to look into the crime of Johnny Vitti being killed. Uh, and then you cut to Harvey Dent with Gilda, and it's the opposite. It's a house that is devoid of kids. Um, and we find out why there's a really heartbreaking moment where Harvey asks 
you know, Gilda who's sitting on the back porch and just kind of staring out into the, the city and into the yard. And he's like, do you have any kids? And she's like, what? And he goes, you know, did any trick or treaters show up? And that line catches her off guard and you kind of wonder why. And then later you find out why. And by, by talking more about that and having that be more of a thing in the story where Gilda's unable to have children and that's like a, a, a thing of contention between the two of them um, and something that they fight over sometimes, even though she's more beating herself up over it. And Harvey's like, hey, we'll find other ways. We'll adopt, whatever. And she's like, I don't want to, you know, and they kind of get into that. And it's 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 pretty it's very relatable, but it's also um, adds a lot to their characters. And then her sitting out in the backyard and them setting that up is something great to set up something that happens later, which is not really explained in the comics where their house blows up. And they survived, but we don't really know how in the comics, whereas, well, we kind of do through some dialogue, but in the movie here, they kind of set up that she sits out there and Harvey, when he comes home from work, always has to go out into the yard and find her. And so that keeps them out of the house when it explodes. So I really liked all that stuff. So yeah, I, all this stuff though, they, they do a really good job of the drama, the action in this, they balance everything really well. Uh, I really dig it. And it's all, like I said about when I did the comic review, it's all about the extinction of the mobsters and the rise of the freaks or the super villains. You have Joker, Mad Hatter, Penguin, uh, Scarecrow, Calendar Man, all of them have already been locked up in Arkham. And originally Batman wanted to send them to Rikers, but it was actually Harvey Dent's decision to put them in Arkham. And I think that's going to play out in the second part too of how they escape. Um, and then obviously Joker does escape in this one. And uh, we find out how here in a little bit. Carmine Falcone is talking with his gang. They mentioned the Wayne deal not happening yet and that he wants to move his money. And that's where Catwoman leads Batman and Harvey Dent to a warehouse full of money, which Batman takes the two-headed coin and flips it and says, all right, heads, we burn the money, tails, we don't. And then he hands the coin to Harvey and Harvey looks at it, you know, later on and says, huh, two heads are better than one. And it's literally Batman handing him the two headed coin, uh, which I thought was awesome. <laughs> Unless Batman swiped it off of Harvey. I don't, I don't know where the coin came from, but Batman has it first and then he gives it to Harvey and Harvey later flips it over and sees that it has two heads. So I kind of liked all those little touches. I thought those were really great. And then, like I said, during the Carmine Falcone moment where he's talking with his gang, his son, Alberto, kind of ha is asked to leave. Uh, his son went off to college, and according to Carmine Falcone, his son is kind of softened up. He, you know, he's uh, let college life get into his head, which is something a lot of people say nowadays where it's like, oh, my kid went to college, and now they come back totally different or whatever. That's, they kind of reference that you know, as being a thing here too, uh, which I thought was kind of funny. And so uh, Alberto's come back, and Carmine sees him as weaker than he, he was before he went to college, and he doesn't want to pass the family business to a weak son. So he's kind of looking for an heir in a way. And it looks like he's trying to eye Bruce Wayne, but Bruce is obviously Batman. And he's not going to have that, uh, or at least so we think until the end here. So we'll, you'll see some things twist and turn. Uh, but so we have, after you know, the coin flip, they burn the money down. And then Harvey Dent's house blows up in retaliation. You, and Batman finds out that it's Mickey Chen who did it, who is another mobster from another gang. So there's a great car chase sequence with the you know Batmobile. And then Batman fights Chen and his gang, which are like some you know super strong fighter guys. And Batman almost beats them, but then uh, Catwoman has to show up to help them with the last guy. Uh, and then Mickey Chen runs into the sewer, which is like the comic books. All this stuff, the, the chase and all that, uh, and the fight in the alley is all new. Uh, but I still liked it. I thought it was great because you need to get a good comic combat scene with Batman in there, show him fighting and stuff. Uh, so I liked that. That was really good. And, you know, Batman follows Mickey down into the sewers, and that's where we run into Solomon Grundy. Um, and then after they catch Mickey, they bring him back to the police department. They try to question him. It doesn't go so well, so Mickey is let go. And when he goes back to his uh, restaurant with his other gang members, the guys who fought Batman in the alley, they all get killed on Thanksgiving night by holiday. Batman is now forced, now that we have two deaths, he has to go with Gordon to Calendar Man, who acts like a, like I said, like a Hannibal Lecter type at Arkham. And they're asking him, you know, who's doing the killings? Because you might know your Calendar Man, you've done stuff on holidays before, and we have a holiday killer now. We have someone who's killed two different people now on two different holidays a month apart, and now it's Christmas Eve. We want to stop a third person from dying. But unfortunately, they're not able to because a third person does die. It's actually uh, one of uh, Carmine Falcone's henchmen gets killed. Uh, and that's because the Joker has been let out of Arkham. He escaped by threatening one of the guards, and he's now out there. And so Batman has to go find him. Uh, but the finale of this is actually really well done because it's basically an interpretation of issue four where Joker steals a plane 
and he wants to fly it to Gotham Square and dump gas all over it because he believes that, you know, most of Gotham will be there in Gotham Square. It's like Times Square on New Year's Eve. Uh, he's like, all right, now that there's someone, you know, the Carmine Falcone's bodyguard died on Christmas Day. Now it's a few days later. We're on New Year's Eve. And at midnight, Joker wants to just drop this gas on Gotham Square and just kill everybody in Gotham Square. And he's like, hey, look, I got a 50-50 chance. Like half the city is going to be there, you know, waiting for that stupid ball to drop. And he's like, so I'll either kill Holiday or I won't. But either way, you know, I'll narrow down the suspects and I'll get to kill a lot of innocent people. So obviously Batman's got to go stop him. But at that time, Bruce is on Carmine Falcone's yacht as Bruce Wayne trying to get closer to, you know, the, the family to see, you know, if there's any other suspects. And that's where he sees Selena Kyle. And it's like him, Selena, Carmine Falcone, Alberto, and and secretly Holiday is somewhere on the yacht. And meanwhile, Joker's out gearing up his plane and getting ready to go, you know, gas uh, Gotham Square. And in the comics, Gotham Square, there's no real cut to Gotham Square to show civilians in it. So you don't really get a full sense of the stakes in the comic. In the movie, what I really like is they put James Gordon and his wife Barbara, Harvey Dent and Gilda, at Gotham Square and they have them down there and they have Gilda and Dent fighting this is where you find out that Gilda is actually not able to get pregnant and then you also earlier in the scene when um you know Harvey Dent broke out of the hospital he went to Carmine Falcone's you know place his like his tower and Gordon shows up and you know says Harvey we should get you home and Harvey is like not really responding to Gordon. He's like, no, I've been cooped up too long. I like it out here. And when you hear it the first time, you're like, okay, he's talking about being cooped up in the hospital and, you know, and now he's outside. But when you really think about it, Josh Duhamel does this really subtle thing with his voice where he is actually speaking as evil Harvey, but you don't really hear it fully yet because evil Harvey really comes out when his face is burned. The explosion did not burn Harvey's face. They do a misdirection there, which I really like. Um, but, uh, but he is still a little scarred up, and he, his evil side is starting to come out. And in the argument he has here with Gilda, it sounds like she might even prefer his evil side because she says a line like, I wish you were more like, and then he goes, more like who? And then she gets quiet, and he goes, look, I'm just one man. And I think that's a reference. I think she likes the evil Harvey, um, but that's just my speculation. You know, so I don't know. We'll see where they, where they go in the next movie. Selena Kyle um, follows Alberto outside on the yacht, and they talk out there. And then he tries to kiss her, which seemed like it come out of nowhere. I think it's just because he's opening up and expressing all these feelings that he has, and he doesn't know why he's telling her. He's like, I don't know why. I feel like comfortable around you. And then she, he leans in to kiss her, and she backs up and goes, whoa, 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 no, no, no. We can't do this. Me and you specifically cannot do this. And I'm wondering, because, again, spoilers for the comic books too, uh, I'm wondering if she knows that they could be related because in the comics they hint that Selena could be Carmine Falcone's daughter. And so that would make Alberto kind of her brother. Even if they had a different mom, they're still related. So maybe that's why she doesn't, I mean, other than he's just like a, a you know, nerdy guy who's like leaning in for the kiss and she's super hot who, and she just broke up with Bruce Wayne. Uh, but, you know, but he's leaning in for the kiss. And I think she was like, no, 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 no kiss. Like we're not doing this. Uh, but she specifically says we can't do this. And I'm wondering if that's a hint to that storyline or not. We'll find out, I guess, in the next uh, in the next part of this. But uh, yeah, she does break up with Bruce Wayne right before that happens, which causes Bruce to finally have an out to leave the party and get on his you know, get his Batman costume on and go fight Joker. And she uh, she kind of hints that she knows he is Batman. And later we find out that she actually does, and he also knows that she's Catwoman. So that's a little different from the comic book too, actually. I like that the finale is those three things. It's the yacht scene, it's the Gotham Square scene, and it's Batman fighting Joker. And then once Batman beats Joker, during their conversation, he thinks he gets a clue from Joker on who the killer might be. So Batman takes down Joker, saves Gotham Square, dumps the plane and the gas into Gotham Harbor so nobody gets poisoned and uh, and then say you know save everybody and then he goes back to the yacht and confronts Alberto right in front of Catwoman or Selina Alberto gets shot and falls over the edge of the yacht and falls into the spinning blades of uh, you know the propellers at the bottom which chop him up into pieces which is uh, really brutal um and we see it happen, which is a little different from the comics. In the comics, they infer that happened, uh, but we didn't actually see it. Uh, but in the movie, we actually see it a little bit. And so Batman now sees Holiday Killer uh, up you know, on the rafters above him, and so he starts chasing him. And, of course, Holiday gets away, 
and then Batman is left with another dead body on New Year's, right at the stroke of midnight, Alberto Falcone is shot. Uh, so now Carmine Falcone has lost his real son, and Batman could have saved him if he just understood that the hint he got was to go save Alberto from the Holiday Killer instead of uh, registering it as it's a clue to who the Holiday Killer is. So again, Bruce is just not good at this detective thing yet, and he's still figuring it out. And because he's so you know stubborn about things and and not very you know he's he's willing to learn and he tries to pick up a few things from Gordon, but just not enough and not enough time to do it in. So he fails. And at the end of this, it's Gordon, Dent, and Batman in an alley near the yacht after it kind of you know docks and stuff. And Batman says, I failed. We all failed. You know, like the three of us, we wanted to make Gotham a safer place and we're losing. And Holiday is still out there and we have no idea who they're going to kill next. So all that stuff was just awesome. I thought it was really, really well done. And it ends on such a downer note because it's like, hey, Batman failed. This is like his first major failure in the comic books. And uh, it's really well told, I feel. And then there is a post credit scene. So make sure you stick around for that. That introduces, it has Bruce Wayne at the funeral for Alberto Falcone. And Carmine Falcone comes up to Bruce and says, hey, I've been thinking about it. You know, I did just lose a son. And I, I really did mean what I, I said on that boat, on the yacht. I would really like to work with you. Like, please, me and your dad, we built that, you know, hospital together. So, you know, w can we finish the work I never got to finish with your dad? Will you, now that you own Wayne Enterprises, will you work with me and we make Gotham better? And Bruce is like, no, I, I, he just flat out is blunt. And he goes, I'll never accept, uh, you know, cr criminal money, basically. He's like, I'm not my father. And whatever you guys did back then, I'm not doing that now. And so Carmine goes, okay, fine. And he goes, well, let me at least introduce you to my associate. And this woman walks up and shakes Bruce's hands. And Bruce is like, oh, yeah, charmed. Nice to meet you. And then they lock eyes. And you see that it's poison ivy. And uh, so Carmine Falcone is now embracing some of these, uh, you know, super criminals and these people with powers uh, to stay ahead. Now that he knows that his son is killed and there is a killer out there, looks like he's upping his security. And he has Poison Ivy here who shakes Bruce's hand and gets total control over him, which I think is going to be big because remember the movie began with and throughout the movie they peppered that Carmine Falcone wants Bruce Wayne to work with him. And Bruce kept denying him, even denied him in this scene here at the funeral and now he has Bruce Wayne under Poison Ivy's control, so he could probably get what he wants. He could probably do the merger that he's been wanting to do for a while. So that's where the movie ends on that note, which I just, it made me, at the end, I was like, oh, no, no, no way, no way. So I'm so pumped. I cannot wait for part two. And luckily, we don't have to wait very long. It's about four or five weeks before part two comes out on digital at the end of July. And then it'll come out in physical form. And at the beginning of August, uh, the first week of August. So I'm very pumped for that. So I will definitely do a full review of the second part when it comes out. But for this one, I got to give this a 4.5 out of 5. I think this is one of the stronger DC animated movies we've gotten ever. And I also think it's one of the best ones we've gotten definitely out of the recent stuff. Like I liked Man of Tomorrow. Um, but I haven't watched the JS one, the, the, the uh, Society one uh, for World War II. I haven't watched Just Society World War II yet. But uh, overall, I really, oh man, I really dug this. I thought this was a really strong movie, and I cannot recommend it enough. So please go check it out. And if you made it all the way through this, please let me know what your review is down in the comments below. And if you think I missed anything, or anything you want clarified, or anything you want to talk about, let me know down below as well. And we'll continue the conversation as always down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.